The Angry Chicken is a production of AMove TV. Bookmark AMove.tv for more gaming and esports shows. The Angry Chicken is directly supported by listeners like you via patreon.com slash TAC. podcast about Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. This is the Angry Chicken. Greetings and welcome everyone to episode 293 of the Angry Chicken. I'm Garrett Weinzerl. I'm joined as always by Willie Dills Gregory, Jocelyn Moffat, and this is our first post-Rosticon launch episode. Hooray! Huzzah! <laughs> or, do trolls have like a cheer? I don't. I don't think it's a Tazingo. There, yeah, I should have just said that. That's, <laughs> that's what I should have went with. But uh, yeah, so last week we recorded day early, did our final uh, card reveal or reviews. Then we did our stream on Tuesday. I think I had the luckiest openings of all three of us. Oh, by a huge margin! Yeah. Woo! Never yeah, happens. Oh yeah. Bad. I think this is I a- had really yeah, I was terrible. I opened uh over two hundred and I opened like two hundred and fifty packs all told. And uh I was still at the end, I was crafting a lot of legendaries at the end there. And yeah. I was yeah, and I've had uh I'm actually like out of dust again. I had to craft a couple more things. So yeah, I'm like uh but all, always what I do at the beginning is for like the first month or so, every time I get to hundred gold, I just buy a pack. Hundred yeah. gold buy a pack, hundred gold buy a pack until I get my one last legendary. And then I start saving for the next one. So I still got, you know, I still got some packs to open. I'll be fine. I did absolutely horribly, terribly on expansion launch day. But I only had, I think, 65 packs to open. But then I finally broke down because there were some new decks I wanted to try. So I finally broke down. I bought another 40 packs and then opened four legendaries in 40 packs. Nice. Oh, damn. So there's just like... Okay. Okay. So you started. None with, of them were the ones that I needed, but. <laughs> so you started with sixty. You bought another forty. So you went up to hundred. Do you remember how many you opened total? Uh, I think I only opened three. So I had the the one that you get guaranteed in your first ten packs, okay. and then I think I opened two others. So I think I got seven overall. Okay. Over that like hundred packs. Okay. Yeah. So I I just swept because I got twelve yeah, out of like a hundred and twenty. Yeah. So it was and one in ten. Yeah, there's what twenty three legendaries all told, so seven out of twenty three. That's yeah, you're missing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. then I had enough gold, or sorry, enough dust to actually make the Undertaker. I refused mm. to do that troll accent name. What do you mean the Undertaker? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to do a troll <laughs> accent. But you gotta say duh and no. Undertaker. No, are we gonna I do not? I will call him the Undertaker. He is not the Undertaker. <laughs> that's not his name. <laughs> There is no T H E anywhere on that card. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna peer pressure you right now, Jocelyn. Say it right. The Undertaker. No. <laughs> I will hold this podcast hostage. <laughs> well, we're gonna be here for the whole hour and a half in silence. Then. <laughs> Chat room. He's a great guard, though. By the way, yes. breaking the game of Hearthstone. Uh, Five mm. five decks at a time. Um, <laughs> oh my god! Like yeah, a lot of different ways to do ridiculous things with that card. He's and if, if you think it's crazy and standard, you should check out some wild stuff that you can do with them. It's, <laughs> it's pretty nutty. It's pretty gross. It's, uh, it's it's pretty gross. Uh, as for the show today, we're going to be swapping up the order this week. I know we've been swapping up the order for a while now in in the way of uh, just not having a lot of the segments of the show because we have so many cards to talk about. But instead of uh, starting with news and moving into strategy, we're going to start with strategy this week because we're going to talk about uh, a lot of the popular decks that have popped up as a result of Rastacon releasing. So let's get into it. It is very hard. <laughs> Time to pay. So there's a lot of decks that have popped yes. up as a result a of Rastakhan. There's new archetypes. There's also existing archetypes that have received uh, a little bit of help in the form of one, two, three, four cards getting added in to their uh, to their deck list. Uh, and we're just going to go in class order. So we'll be starting with uh, some Druid highlights here, starting with 
the Undertaker Druid. <laughs> yeah, the Undertaker Taunt Druid is really strong because you can get infinite value with this with this deck. Uh, so the idea here is you take the existing Taunt Druid shell um, and you throw in Amani War Bears five sevens at Rush that are are pretty strong. They have Taunt. Uh, obviously, the Undertaker. Uh, so you posted a, a version that I have not messed around with. Um, but I guess this is the most popular version uh, with Moshog Enforcers, and mm-hmm. they get pulled uh, because of the inclusion of uh, what's uh, Master Okart. Yeah. So I would not play that unless I'm playing the Okart package. But I see when you're playing the Okart package, it's pretty strong to be able to pull a couple of 214s with Taunt and Divine Shield, and then obviously getting those back. The version I've been playing just runs Double War Bear. Double Iron Golem and Ziliax as the taunt package. Oh, and uh, Lich King as the taunt package. So you just get those back, and that's fine. That's enough. But I can definitely see how an Oakheart package could get you like a bigger power spike a little earlier, right? Because like right on nine, you drop that bad boy. You get like you know your Hadronox to come out right then. You get a Moshog Enforcer, and then I guess there's nothing with one, but. Still, mm-hmm. that's plenty, right? Well, so. and that's the really cool thing because this is the version I've been playing, and it's kind of a combination of like a tokeny thing because there's also Spreading Plague and Malfurion in this deck, but then you also have Branching Paths and Savage Roar to take advantage of like when you can actually fill your board. Mm-hmm. So with Oakheart and pulling Hadronox so early, it's actually fine now because you like want it to die. You don't need Witching Hour because you just get infinite Undertakers. So it's you just keep bringing your taunts back again and again and again and eventually they can't deal with your board and then you have seven whatevers on your board and then you branching paths savage roar kill them Hmm. yeah now the version i'm playing does not have any savage roars doesn't have spreading plague i could see this one being i can see both both ways being really strong though essentially Mm -hmm. yeah the the version i was playing is a little bit more like just draw my whole deck and then do all my undertake stuff right so yeah so the so for people who aren't familiar Astral Tiger, you put one of those in the deck. Uh, and then if you the Astral Tiger's Death Rattle reads, shuffle a copy of this minion into your deck. So it's not shuffle a, cop, a copy of Astral Tiger into your deck, it's this minion. Well, when you apply that Death Rattle onto the Undertaker, it shuffles another the Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and For so, every time Dill says it that way, I'm going to say it really, the proper way. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to really like enunciate the Undertaker. <laughs> that now that I know that it bothers Jocelyn. Uh, um, so. <laughs> that was my big problem with this deck originally is I was like, I didn't, I played it for two or three games before I actually got the combo off. Yeah. So I didn't really understand it at first because I thought it was going to shuffle more Astral Tigers into my deck. And I'm like, okay, so I guess I never fatigue because Astral Tiger. And then I actually saw it work and I was like, oh dear, this is like (laughs) shuffling a bazillion Hadronoxes into my deck. Okay, let's go. But also (laughs) it's Hadronoxes that are eight fives instead of three sevens, which means you can kill your own Undertakers with just a buffed up Spellstone rather than having to use Naturalize. So now you have four activators. Yep. Which, you know, Hadronox, because the one, the one like downfall of this deck is you play it and get silenced, right? So, yeah. It's a, this is probably, I mean, we're not going to spend this much time on each deck, but this is probably the one that has like an, a thing that's got to be explained, I think. To yes. A lot of yeah. But I'm sure everyone's seen it by now. If you're playing <laughs> any amount of Hearthstone, it's all over the place and it's, uh, it's real strong. It's real good. I, I, yeah, I have, I have those, uh, Moshog enforcers, um, make me audibly cuss. I see, I still haven't even run into this version. Like it was so funny when I was looking over this, I was like, I haven't even seen this version. Yeah, it's 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 pretty apparently nutty. it's the most popular. I just died. Yeah, I haven't run into a single Moshog Enforcer in hmm. online games yet. Yep. Yep. Well, uh, let's move out of uh, super serious. I want to break the ladder land and uh, talk about a pretty Mimi Druid deck, Gonk Druid. But this is not just because there's also a Gonk. Apparently, someone got rank one with Gonk Malagos Druid. Uh, using the gonk just to, I think, clear off all their, all their twig charges. Twig, yeah, pop the twig. But yeah. this one is is essentially designed to OTK people. Uh, and the way that you OTK people is that when you have multiple gonks on board, it actually banks all those extra attacks. So gonk reads that when you attack a minion and, and it dies, you get another attack. Well, if you had three gonks on the board, that meant when you killed a minion, you got three more attacks, right? 
So essentially what you do is you gonk, uh, then you flabidness floop to make another gonk. Then you could even faceless manip if you got enough mana to do so. Uh, and this actually, I've seen a lot of versions that are running Floop's Glorious Goop. This one doesn't have it in there. But <laughs> the reasoning is that Floop's Glorious Goop allows you to start killing stuff and then get enough mana to do Gonk plus uh, Floop plus, you know, whatever. Like, they also, I've seen a lot of versions running the three-cost Prince that copies a dude. Oh, Calderon. Calderon. Yeah. Uh, copies a dude if you don't have a, a three-cost thing. So you can get up to, like, four Gonks going. And then once you have that going, then if you have your hero power or your hero attack up to like five, seven, whatever it might be, you suddenly can bank like 20 extra attacks and then you just hit their face over and over and over again until they're dead. Mm. So you can get like over 100 damage with this pretty easily. That, that's just bananas. Also, I, I would, I just, I'm going to give credit to chat room. I don't remember who it was that mentioned World Tree with Gonk, but we, we were kind of like, yeah, but you're probably not going to do that. But yeah, here it is working. Yeah, so the the rank one version though, this is funny because Crip was playing a bunch of it last night, and he never once played the gonk. He was <laughs> winning because he was of the just Malagos, playing Malagos druid. druid. Yeah, yeah, he was playing yeah. Malagos druid that happened to have a gonk, which essentially was a thirtieth card that never even hit the board. Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Yeah, and I'm just you know winning without." So it's like it's not like that's just some important thing. It's just hey, sometimes maybe you're gonna. The, the problem that I have with, and I don't think it's going to be a real deck, is because I can just not play like five minions onto the board and you can't then bank 20 extra attacks. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And I think that's people are going to learn how to play around it and then yeah. not play out minions when it looks like they're ready to go off. And then, then you mean what are ready they to gonk do? off? Is yeah, that, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, ready to <laughs> gonk off. Yeah. yeah. So we've already <laughs> talked about uh, uh, Oakheart having an attractive package and now we're talking about gonking off. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, cool. Yep. This, cool. Is, this, is, this is the world we live Good in. Good to right know. Yeah. And, and, and one more thing, <laughs> you dude. Just... Undertaker, you've got Gonk, you got Floop, <laughs> yeah. Floops, and Flamidinous <laughs> Floops. Yeah, and... you <laughs> Gonk your Floop, but you should probably <laughs> Gloop first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never <laughs> Gonk. Before you floop. Never Floop your Gonk before you Gloop. Yeah. <laughs> and then Shoop, Shoop, a doop. What the hell even are we talking about anymore? You know, everyone is so concerned about power creep. That's the thing everyone wants to talk about. No one wants to talk about absurd creep, which at this yeah. point in Hearthstone, if anyone just tuned in, not knowing what we're talking about, if we're talking about Undertaker, Gloop and Floop, Gonks, it sounds <laughs> completely insane. Total nonsense. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm smelling burnt toast over here. It's pretty, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, uh, yeah, there's there's Gonk for you. If anyone's wondering where the deck lists are coming from today, we're just uh, going down the line at HS Replay. Uh, they're not a sponsor. We just like their website. That's where we're pulling all these deck lists from. Uh, let's move into Hunter and talk about Spell Hunter. Uh, Hunter seems to be, I, like, I don't know, like, this... This is real good. Out the gate, Hunter is feeling like Druid, where there's just so many damn versions you can play, and they all have win ladder climb potential yeah yeah every version of hunter right now is pretty good um they just have a lot of powerful stuff they can do and uh yeah you can just kind of shoot you know it's like choose your own adventure with hunter what do you like do you like spell hunter do you like recruit do you like secrets what do you like it's all fine it's all gonna <laughs> work out for you yep do you great. like do you like hero cards? I hope you do because guess what? You're yeah. playing both of them. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, they're both super super good. I, I don't remember uh, y'all's take on it, but I was definitely wrong. I was like, Zuljin's great, but not in this meta. We'll just wait until everything rotates up. Nope, never mind. I was completely wrong. We're just gonna play both hero cards. I you know I figured that uh that it's a good card, but I also figured that you wouldn't want to overwrite your Rexar thing, and it's true. You still don't want to overwrite your Rexar if you. Don't like if you have Rexar, you probably just want to stick with Rexar. But but I think like just filling your board with three threes and playing with the secrets is just like that's just gonna win you the game most of the time. Yeah, and I feel like um they have enough game like mid to mid-ish game that with just plain old spell stuff, you can usually get to 10. I've seen a lot of people like play Zuljin on 10, get you know, big boards back with to my side and all that kind of stuff, and then and spell stones, obviously. And then they have these big boards and then they're like, okay, I have Zuljin for maybe a turn or two, but he's done his thing because his hero power isn't all that great. And then I just Rexar. Like the people, yeah. like the games, the meta right now 
is mostly made up, at least from what I've experienced, is mostly made up of people doing like big, crazy start of expansion, like combo type things. I have not seen very much like aggro. So I feel like right now, Zul'jin is very, very playable because games are often going to like turn 15 or more. That's and definitely been sick. my experience with this, with the ladder in general since launch is that yeah. it feels like the emergency break has been pulled on Hearthstone and my games are yeah. kicking forever. So in a much, yeah. much slower meta, even though like Odd Paladin is still like the top dog deck, um, I think in this kind of a meta, you're going to have a lot more slower games and that allows Zul'jin to be played. If we go to a faster, more aggressive meta, then I think we'll see things like Spellhunter fall off. But but right this, now. this Spellhunter deck... The, the, it doesn't even care if you're Odd Paladin because it goes double explosive trap, Death Stalker Rexar, Spell Stones. It's like, I don't care if you have giant boards of 1-1s. One like, they're all dead to me real, yeah. real quick. And you can make the game. And and I found that actually as the hunter, uh, especially with the with the Secret Hunter, which we haven't talked about yet, but even with this with this Spell Hunter, I'm the beatdown deck. I'm the aggro deck. Uh, the, the emergency, you know, Zul'jin thing later, Oftentimes doesn't even come up for me because I'm the one who's killing you on turn seven. You know, it's like mm -hmm. it's Zul'jin is nice and all. <laughs> it's good to have it there. But I feel like Hunter is just super powerful from turn one all the way through. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hunter right now to me is like the only class that can just go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or whatever with like and a, still have a, late a game. perfect card every single turn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Undertaker Druid is like trying to like ramp and get to this big crazy late game. Hunter's just like, I'm curving out and everything I do is just above the board, right? It's like, it's crazy. I mean, on turn five, I dropped four three threes, you know? And after, and on turns two and three and four, whatever I was doing, all this crazy stuff. So like, they're just, they just got power all the way. DKs and, and you know, hero cards are not, man. They're crazy right now. Hunter got game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what's cool though is that uh, it's not. I'm just very happy that we're not in like the that like odd hunter is not the thing. Yeah, right? yeah. That we're in a, a thing where hunter like actually plays a game of Hearthstone. It's not just a game of can I finish your face before you stabilize, right? I have I have seen a couple of odd hunters, but they're definitely the minority. They're not good. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm, yeah, no, well, with, with all these options, you know, unless you're on, you know, trying to build a budget deck and you have Baku, um, I don't sure. see, I don't see that as the optimal way to go. Um, no, but, if you want to be aggro, this next one though, Secret Hunter. That's, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about cool. let's talk about Secret Hunter. So uh, very similar, running again. Uh, well, actually, is yeah, yeah, running both hero cards. Yep. Uh, but, but that's the top of the curve. Like there, it, there's nothing between Rexar and Zuljin in this deck, which is kind of nutty. No, no, not at all. This is a a low drop oriented uh, deck, and I use the term drop uh, sparingly because a lot of these are spells. Yeah. So the the I mean, but the thing is, this deck, when you get the optimal start, you go secret keeper into whatever. It doesn't doesn't matter what it is, right? <laughs> whatever secret it is, there's a, a an abundance of them. Uh, you know, generally, like things like Wandering Monster, uh, Freezing Trap, Venom Strike, those are like probably the best ones. But you do that. Then on turn three, you play Mass Contender. If you control a secret, play another one from your deck. So on turn three, now you have, you know, a three, four secret, uh, secret keeper plus two secrets plus a two, four. And it's like the game's just already over. Yeah. Like they just, they can't do anything. Right. Uh, turn four, they play a minion and then you flanking strike it or whatever, or you don't. Or you just shoot. Or you just play two going. more secrets. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. At that point, just game is over. So, uh, this this deck has the most disgusting openings I've ever seen. And actually, you know, I was very very hesitant to think of Mass Contender or Blood Scalp Strategist as good cards. But after playing them in this deck, I'm like, no, these are these are amazing. These cards are insane. Just because of the, the power of turns one and two. Mm -hmm. Like three, you can afford a two four because of what it. It also does. But if you were having weaker turns one and two, you probably wouldn't be able to get away with it. But this deck, it's like I don't need an immediate giant body of tempo. I'm getting the tempo other ways. Pretty cool. I like it a lot. Also, can we just talk about how much more I enjoy this to like old school Secret Pally and the way it deployed secrets? Mm. 
a little more linear, right? It doesn't just uh-huh. like go, okay, nothing, 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 bang. Like, <laughs> right, oh, right. Like you're actually, yeah. again, you're playing a game of Hearthstone. You're the, the theme of your deck, you're playing around it throughout the entire course of an individual game. Yeah. Rather than just it's, building it's up. It's also possible. Who am I? <laughs> it's also possible by the way, that this deck is going to get a lot weaker once the secret package is a little more locked in. Because right now, it's hard to know what secrets are likely because there's just it's still up in the air so it's They've hard got to play like almost one of everything i was yeah, about to say this one yes i mean a lot of secret heavy hunter decks in the past though have been in flux for almost an entire expansion so is it ever gonna really lock in are we ever gonna be like yes these are the secrets as as etched in stone and never maybe shall you <laughs> move not. away from it uh, <laughs> maybe not i just yeah it's just uh right now it's like you're testing for like five different things and it's crazy. Yeah. And that's what makes it really difficult to uh, play again. That's what I find cool about it because that's what I always liked about Reno decks is like, well, I've, if I can only have one of a card in my deck, there's a lot of room for personal choices and what I include in the deck. And that's what I kind of like about uh, secret heavy hunter decks is you can customize a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, this deck is pretty cool, but I think the next one is my favorite. And, the, and, and we've, we're, we've talked about two very powerful hunters already. And we're and still in Hunter, by the way. Yes. Uh, yeah. th- we were talking before the show. We, this will probably be our deep dive next week. Um, we'll mm-hmm. see. But Recruit Hunter uh, is back. And Undasta is dope. <laughs> so, yeah. So, this is this is essentially... There's there's not a lot of just Death Rattle Egg Hunter left anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's pretty much just kind of gone away because it's just out ranked by these other hunters and this is the secret hunter top half the death rattle hunter bottom half right so <laughs> you got a secret hunter with some with some death rattle hunter pants on uh and uh, <laughs> i want death rattle pants dope. somebody <laughs> make death rattle pants death rattle pants yeah uh but it's it's super cool i really like this version be- i so i played this in the uh Brawliseum. I got to 10 wins, and I probably should have got 12. I messed up a couple of games. But there's a lot of decision-making and cool things that you can do with this deck. Stitch Tracker, obviously, getting you extra King Crushes, extra Undastas, all that kind of stuff. Super, super strong. And uh, it's just it's got, like, the ability to run people over and then also take them to the end. Uh, so I, I think this is probably the most powerful version out there. If someone's looking for just the deck to, to grind ladder with and climb, this is probably what I recommend right now. Well, yeah, it's almost like Undasta kind of like shores up a weakness of an already super powerful deck because one of the big problems was like, oh, well, what if I draw my King Crush? What if I draw my Charge Devil Soars? Well, now it's just like that doesn't really matter because Katharina will bring out Undasta and then you also get a King Crush. Like, yep. And when yeah. you get the Stitch Trackers to get extra King Crushes or extra Undastas, you get and then you get like Undasta into Undasta into King Crush. It's like, yeah, it's nutty. So pretty cool. Pretty fun deck. Yeah. So the deck already was powerful and now it's just bonkers. <laughs> yeah. And it's got the Zul'jin and it's got the Death Stalker Rexar. So, yeah. and like you see, there's a few, there's a few spells in here that are just kind of meant for that. So like Deadly Shot is just there so that when you play uh, Zul'jin, you just Deadly Shot something while yeah. you're planking, uh, or sorry, Lesser Emerald Stone aboard and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's pretty crazy what this deck can do. I felt like you wanted to say cray cray Jocelyn, but you just didn't want to commit. No, never. Hmm. I feel like you want to say Undertaker, but you just don't. No, 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 never. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's talk about my favorite uh, deck so far, Odd Mage, which uh, we played on stream. It was one of the three decks uh, we decided to uh, try pilot after we cracked packs. And you can actually head over to the AMOVE YouTube right now and see those games, uh, along with Jocelyn's Heal Tiger Paladin games. Um, we may have not put up the discard warlock games because they didn't go very well. But <laughs> the beauty of that version of that that's actually good. That yeah, at some point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is the deck I have played the most of. Uh, it, it and what has settled as the popular build is actually pretty different from what we played uh, on launch day. Uh, it's still running elementals, but it's not running elementals that synergize with elementals. It's just running good elementals. Mm. Yeah, you don't get the seven mana six six that shoots things and all that kind of stuff. You just get uh, the tyrants and the Berengeddon. It's it's kind of like the elementals that are in the deck now are just kind of there because of what happens after Frostless Jaina. Like you just yeah. want, you know, like that 
there and getting heal everything kind of thing right. going on. Yeah. Well, um, get Geddon has just been solid. And I've seen those, those discard warlocks a few times and it's so good in that matchup. Oh my God. It also <laughs> is running blast wave and dragon's fury, which were we doing that or were we just running? The no, dragon? We were know. just doing dragon's fury. Okay. I think we talked about putting a one of blast wave in, uh, but yeah, yeah this, we decided against it. At, this is, ultimately. Think, yes, yeah. doubling down. I, I in the long run, I really like it because now my dragons. I have yet to have a game where Dragon's Fury didn't have a spell to pull. Mm -hmm. That is true. Like you kind of guarantee that you have those. Um, I, I think so. So I kind of soured on this deck after playing it last night, unfortunately, because I got a mage quest and I just was like, just not having any success. Like even when I turned into Frostlit Shannon, which used to feel like that's an unlosable position, um, decks were still just like overpowering me with what they were doing right like their late game was just so insane that i was like but i can ping and make a water elemental and they're like yeah i don't care undertaker uh, <laughs> and, and like so i feel like what this deck is really missing is the is the ability to like fireball and polymorph and stuff like that so actually the odd thing i, I i'm happy about it it's like it soured me a little bit on the deck as far as like laddering with it uh, but I'm happy because it's like these odd and even things are supposed to like penalize you for that mm -hmm. extra power, right? So it actually feels like, oh my god, yes, I am legit penalized here. Uh, I do think this will be a deck that we'll see a lot of tournament play because I think it has some amazing matchups. Uh, uh, most of them like are, matter. and that that that's why I've been fielding it is because uh, in like uh, ranks. I'm between 10 and five right now. So I've been going, yeah. I've, I've been playing a lot of decks. So I'm waffling between seven and eight. Um, but I have not been seeing a lot of Druid, which is a horrible matchup for this deck. Yeah. That's been the problem for me. Is it's just tons of Druid everywhere. Yeah. But almost everything else being played right now is, is favored for, for odd mage. Um, with a, with a couple yeah, see, I outliers. feel like if I'm playing against odd paladin and odd rogue, I'm going to love this deck, you know, but if I'm playing against, yeah, the, uh, the, the all those druids <laughs> that i'm just gonna be like real sad all the time yeah but i think you know i i think that uh we still haven't even seen the final the final version final form <laughs> so, yeah there's still some some tweaks that i think are are gonna come i because, want uh, i want a jana emo that says this isn't even my final form sure <laughs> like i think i think the zola is, is gonna be back in this deck at some point because like when you can zola the janali that's just so strong i really do like the zola um yeah. and they're Oh, uh, it's all it, there's other targets for it too. Like a lot of times, I'm just like, if I just had one more daring fire eater, I could just go face with my hero power and win the game. Uh, sure. Or if I just had like one more voodoo doll, you know what I mean? Like all that kind of stuff. I just need to kill one more giant thing, right? Yeah. So. I'm just trying to decide what to remove. Like maybe a Stonehill Defender. Uh, they don't seem yeah. that important. Also, you could get out of one blast wave, probably. I feel like there's there were a lot of times where my hand was full of big AOEs. And I had no boards to big AOE, right? Mm. Like I was the one kind of building the board, and I was like, I don't ever want to AOE my side too. I know, we, yeah. I know, we said we wouldn't get do that, you know? too deep in every deck, but you want to know what ha what anecdotal thing happened to me that uh, single handedly made me feel better about having two blast waves in my deck? Mm. Multiple games in a row, I ended up with two arcane tyrants in my hand and no five mana spells. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, no, that hurts. <laughs> so yeah, I, that so that actually is like the most one of the most powerful things this deck does, right? Is it does a big AOE and then drops a 4-4. And then next turn, it's like, I can now deal six damage to something because of the hero power. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's pretty That's pretty dank. I like that. Yep. Yeah, but I'm with you. I think Zola needs to find its way back in here because Zola just turns the volume up on this deck mm -hmm. just a, a little bit more. I think that was, a, that was the thing that I was having problems with is I was just running out of stuff and they weren't. Like, they were able to continue as we went into the late game. And I'm like, I'm out of threats. And the other guy is just like, I've got a million Undertakers. Yeah, and I'm like I can't deal with that. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see where this ends up. But I, it's it's always a deck that I think you'll be able to come back to in this meta because it's got so many tools right now. Yeah, I'm very much enjoying it. Uh, let's talk about Tempo Mage, which isn't very different from things you've seen in the past, but it's running Spell Zerker, a card I don't even think we've bothered talking about. <laughs> yeah, so this one you can ping it yourself to give it the plus two spell damage. So yeah, it's a two mana um, two three, and it has spell damage enrage on it even though enrage isn't a yeah. thing anymore so this I, I i was actually kind of surprised that this deck's still being around because i had just kind of written it off without mana worm but uh there was a couple of games where i got played against this and they played a man addict and i couldn't deal with it and i was like the next turn i just took like 18 
and then I was dead the turn after that. So still has a lot of burst potential. Essentially, all they've added in is the spell Zerker, but uh, you know, putting it two three on turn two, and then on turn three you can like ping it arcane missiles for five, and all you can kind of run away with the game at that point. If the opponent can't deal with that two two, then you just have that. Because I think the problem with the uh, cosmic anomaly forever is four mana. You know, it's just like. I pay too much for it to then be able to put a bunch of spells in that turn. This you can kind of just drop and then just snowball from there. So it's kind of interesting that it's still somehow working without Mana Worm. I, I thought this yeah. deck was dead, but it is still here. It's kind of like it's the same effect, right? Your spell damage plus two with a body for four mana, but splitting it over the two turns just makes a really big difference. Yeah, the ability yeah. to like play it or like early just has a two, three. And then if they can't deal with it, then you get the, the ability to like invest two more mana if you want also like there's some times where it's like now i can't play like let's say i'm playing against like odd paladin with this deck i play this and they're like do i hero power because <laughs> now <laughs> he just runs his two three into one of my one ones and uh then he has plus two spell power so it makes yeah. the opponents turn a little bit tricky yeah yeah spell zerker is an interesting card and, and the, the the stats are in the right place um you know it's a two three not a three two granted i think we'd prefer a one four but Hmm. balance Heck, yeah i mean if you honestly like the uh, the two attack on it doesn't matter that much but it's i don't know i think it's i think it's right where it's supposed to be yeah. interesting card it probably only finds play in decks like this which i think is right yeah yeah it's solid uh otk paladin this is a thing <laughs> this is the thing that's happening. Yeah. Uh, you, Odd, Odd Paladin is also a thing, but we, we all know about that. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> not completely unchanged. If you were playing Odd yeah. Paladin before last Tuesday, you're playing the same deck now, unless you're getting weird. <laughs> you know, I I tried out a few new cards in Odd Paladin, and I just went right back to the other ones. I was like, never mind, these aren't as good as I expected. But this this is a cool deck. This is a this is like the OTK with the Uther. Uh, yeah. So you basically take people all the way to the end, um, and then you make four um, horsemen, and you win. And it's really hard to stop them from doing it because you have double timeout and all this healing. Uh, so the idea is you you uh, get your Uther down, you make a, a dude, then you either bounce it with uh, one of your... It's kind of interesting that it only runs the, the four mana Brewmasters, but then I was thinking about it, and it's because of Call to Arms. You can't run the the two mana ones because it runs double call to arms just to kind of thin the deck but yeah you bounce one then you bounce another one then you zola one or whatever and then uh on on the last turn you're able to just play those three out and then play the fourth one there is rng you do to it have to, i was gonna say you do have yeah. to make sure though when you're bouncing things back to your hand and zoloing things that you're getting the all right three ones. of the yeah all three different ones you don't mm -hmm. want it because once you uh bounce one back into your hand you always have a chance to create that one again with your hero power so yeah, it's RNG at that point, but if you, okay, the first one you do, then you got like 75% chance to get a different one. Then it's a 50-50. So it's like, uh, and oftentimes, like you're hitting the hero power, and because you have so many stall tools, you're able to, to you know, just not worry about it. This one, this version is interesting because, I like, I don't think I like this version as much as I like the version that uh, Dog was playing, which runs uh, Double Spike Ridge Steed and Lanessa. Because that just gives you more ways to super stall in the late game. So I think it cut like the Shrink Ray and the High Priest and stuff like that. But it had that Lanessa Spike Ridge package and it was able to just like, you know, because there's not as much silence in the in the game right now as you think there might be. Um, so oftentimes those just come down and just make impenetrable walls. Do, do you feel that's going to change though pretty soon with... But that we'll see more silence? <laughs> yeah, how, how the game is shaking out right now. Maybe. I mean, I think in tournaments, you'll definitely see a lot of people playing like a single silence index just because like Undertaker Druid, you got to be able to silence one of them at some point or else you'll never kill them all. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, just on ladder, I don't know. Like, I also feel like a lot of decks just have 30 slots and it's really hard to find a spot for tech cards right now. So I'm not sure. But even with like, even if somebody does silence, like let's say they silence first Spike Ridge Steed. Then you spike your seed again. Then you Lanessa. It's like they just run out. They can't silence them all. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. thinking about it for this deck as much as I was on Taker Druid. So yeah, yeah. That that is like the counter though is getting it silenced. So yeah. But this is not the only way to OTK people in Paladin. No, it is not. There's also a, a Holy Wrath Shervala, uh OTK Paladin. Yeah, and this deck is super cool. 
I played a lot of this deck on actual launch day, and I was doing pretty well with it because it was not just winning with the OTK. It was just like outlasting people, you know, just running them out of stuff. Uh, it just kills everything that they do. And then at the end, the idea is you, like, you basically, like, go through your whole deck. Mm -hmm. you, just, you play all your deck, and then once it's gone, you play uh, Augmented Elec and Baleful Banker. You put two Shervala the Tigers into your deck. So now you only have two Shervala. Ah. Yeah, and then the next turn you draw one, but you still got one in there, and then you uh, Holy Wrath them for 25. And if you, yeah, Christ. Yeah. <laughs> and like so, sometimes, uh, sometimes you were able to get like just double Shrivalas in when you had like maybe three or four cards left, and then you just the next turn you have double Holy Wrath, and it's like if I miss the first time, I probably hit the second one, and you know, like I I was able to kill a lot of people just by like okay Yolo Wrath here it's fifty fifty, and I killed a lot of people with it. It was pretty sweet. So many Fun games deck. have have gone to freaking uh, fatigue since the launch of the expansion for me too mm -hmm. this, this version running countess ashmore though i was not running that that's interesting because that makes sure you draw the shirvala mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of cool i like that i gotta try this out yeah interesting it's probably lots of ways to attack this but it's a super fun otk it's very satisfying when you get it off i mean just shooting <laughs> someone for 25 is just always gonna be <laughs> so many poor board choices this episode <laughs> by all of us <laughs> uh dragon priest uh control dragon priest is kind of making a comeback uh playing very similar to dragon priests of the past yeah it uses the dk um the dk mind blast kind of finisher mm -hmm. they always have used um i was playing this last night actually with pretty good success i think i was like i didn't play a lot of it i played like maybe six or seven games i think i was like five or two or four and three or something like that. i mean it was good it was working uh, it's got some new cool tools with the Dragon Maw Scorcher, which does some AOE damage to the board. Yeah, this card was a sleeper for me. I, I wasn't yeah. really giving this guy the time of day. It's really good. Uh, it's in all the odd dragon warriors out there, too, and Crowd mm -hmm. Roaster's in there. It's also got the um, Fire Tree Witch Doctor. Uh, that's basically all the new stuff that you'll see in there, but it's just more tools to do what they were already doing, which was just, you know, control, control, control turn into Shadow Reaper Anduin, Alex draws a you, mind, you know, ping, mind blast, ping, mind blast, ping, and kill people. So um, very good deck. Yeah, this is, a, this is a cool one I haven't tried yet, but it's pretty high up on the list of decks I want to play. Crowd Roaster has been just ruining my ruining games for me <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a good way, like it should, dealing seven damage. But uh. You know what's funny is, like, I think it's in, like, the exact right spot, right? Because a seven mana seven for the deal is seven. There's a lot of times where it's like, and it oh, can't go face. Eight. It can't go like, face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't know. It's like, and that's, I want there to be cards like that where it's not just like auto kill. It's like, no, I deal this amount. It might not be the right, but it's a lot and that kind of thing. It's, I think it's cool. Yep. I was just, I was just glad that it uh, doesn't kill my Ragnaros. <laughs> that's, that's what makes me happy. Uh, Kingsbane Rogue is coming back with a vengeance. Yeah. And this makes me mad. <laughs> uh, I'm not a fan. uh yeah it is uh it's it's getting it's getting some work done out there so it's running uh, a bit of a pirate package um but not much of one a pretty small package though <laughs> the tiniest little package you've ever seen. king's man rogue has a very tiny package <laughs> so the funny thing about it you'd think raiding party would mean i need to run tons and tons of pirates but I don't even care about the pirates. I just care about getting the dang Kingsbane back. That's why you think exactly. the rating party. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. So, the only pirates you really run are just weapon buffing pirates. Uh, just make sure that you just never run out of the weapon. You just always have the weapon. Yep. Toxicologist and Cutthroat Buccaneer are hanging out. I've also seen a version that had um, the uh, Lab Recruiter. So, like, sh they would shuffle green skins back into the deck. Oh, interesting. Yeah, no and then pirates. so then yeah, they have they could pull you know two green skins at a time with their raiding party. So yeah, yeah, it's just kind of gross how fast this deck gets out of hand with that weapon, and then yeah. obviously they never die once they get it going with the leeching poison. Uh, you can doomerang it and all that kind of stuff, and then when you get to fatigue games, I, like there's a lot of these games where the games have gotten out of hand, 
because they're playing against the King's Bane Rogue because they never mm. fatigue and they get, never run out of health. And uh, so, like, this guy's toast, that's he got the 20k armor against the King's Bane Rogue because the King's Bane Rogue was like, hey, eventually you're going to fatigue, right? Um, and they don't because at some point they can Valera and then play two King's Banes and then they always have one in the deck, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. And it's, it's just one of those decks where it's like if they do their thing it just feels like there's nothing you can do you know mm -hmm. and that's what that's like well yeah because even if you run like weapon hate yeah it then all it does is it puts it back in the deck it doesn't yeah. really they help. pull it out again yeah they just keep whipping it out man <laughs> they just keep whipping out that tiny package <laughs> so uh, yeah but it's like it, it feels almost like quest mage or something where it's like i'm just watching some dude play hearthstone by himself yep and that's why it annoys me. That's why these kind of decks I hate. But whatever. It's fine. Um, it's fine. It's not like top tier, so I don't see it that often. I still find... I, I don't know. It's weird. Because I still think Kingsbane, the weapon, is one of the coolest cards I've ever seen out yeah. of the Hearthstone. But I'm with you. Like When when I, when I it starts happening, I'm just like, oh, come on. Yeah. Stop we'll healing for... Stop poison on it. Stop Got healing for 12 back. on your Doomerang. I hate you. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, uh, but that's okay. If that's making you mad, uh, it takes solace in the fact that Odd Rogue is alive and well, but using a few new cards. Well, not the cards I would have expected. I think this is why I put this in there, just because <laughs> oh. it's kind of weird what cards made it oh. into Odd Rogue. Oh, come on, Dills. We all called M Moshog Announcer seeing play an Odd Rogue. <laughs> that was an obvious uh, include. And former champ. That one I yeah. definitely didn't see. I was like, this card is straight garbage, but... Apparently, they just like the fact that it's got two bodies in one card. That's really the whole thing here. Because you get two bodies, and it helps you land fungal mancers and stuff the next turn. So They just like the weird, creepy sand trolls from BFA. That's why they're including <laughs> it. So, I mean, it still does odd rogue stuff. Not really much to talk about here other than the fact that, like, Moshog Announcer, when you play it, is just really hard to get rid of. Mm -hmm. You got to cast a spell on it or something because you run the chance of... Uh, you know, just losing the game right there if you try to attack into it. Yeah. It's kind of what Odd Rogue wants from you. It's like, here's a thing you can't deal with, and then I'm going to murder you. Uh, and the <laughs> fact that it's got six attack, too, it's just like, it's such a threat. So mm -hmm. kind of cool that that made it in somewhere. Yeah. I, I, I dig it. So on, on top of uh, the Flappy Bird and on top of the Henchkin th Thug, why can't I talk today? Here's, here's, here's another <laughs> card. Henchkin Flub. Flub, yeah. You got to floop your flub. Uh, but make sure you gloop before you do any of that. <laughs> yeah, just keep putting threats down, man. And it's got that two attack da uh, dagger, so it's just like, yep, yeah, I'm coming at you. Yeah. Um, we have still quite a few decks to get through. Let's take a quick break and thank one of our sponsors today. Away Travel is back sponsoring this episode. You can check out the awesome luggage that they make over at awaytravel.com slash TAC. Uh, Away has the perfect gift for everyone on your list of this holiday season uh, and for every destination on theirs. Uh, we all have Away luggage here at Angry Chicken. Um, I, I'm very happy to be done traveling with all the travel that was happening, but I, Away made it just a, a little less stressful. Because they just make nice luggage. I think all three of us have spent time now talking about how this is probably the nice one of the nicest damn things we've ever owned. Oh um, yeah, it's my grown-up luggage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like a grown-up when I'm traveling. Like, check me out. <laughs> I, you're not using the free duffel bag from the the baseball game you went to that they gave out on like the Thursday night game or whatever. <laughs> I'm no longer like that weird guy with a, just a trash bag. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, Away is certainly an upgrade from that. If you're not familiar with their uh, with their luggage, they come in all shapes and sizes, but both carry-on sizes uh, come with uh, internal batteries that they pop out very easily, by the way. They're removable with like one click, so you can go and charge it. Um, and they can charge your phone uh, up to five times, which means a lot of Hearthstone. Or, I don't know, maybe you're playing something else right now. Maybe you'll, that, that's a lot of Smash Brothers on your Switch. Mm. Sure. Just saying. Just, just saying. Uh, it's got the interior compression system, which means you can you can pack more, you can push the air out, or as Jocelyn likes to call it, it's a smooshing system. Yes, their patented smooshing technology. Yes, <laughs> yes. No one's ever thought of smooshing before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's got a TSA-approved combination lock, a 100-day return policy, and a lifetime warranty. On top of all of this, uh, they have a special offer for Anger Chicken listeners. You can get $20 off a suitcase by going to awaytravel.com slash TAC and using the promo code TAC at checkout. Uh, and that's because this season... Everyone wants to get away. 
So go All check right. them out. Again, it's twenty dollars off a suitcase by visiting awaytravel.com slash TAC. Use the promo code TAC at checkout to get that twenty dollars off. We thank them for their support and we thank you for going to awaytravel.com slash TAC and checking it out. Now, getting back to the decks, uh, and we're going to load up a uh, shaman aggro. Uh, it's like an aggro shaman that overloads. We're going to overload up some aggro shaman. Yeah, it's uh, this version does not run the frog loa, which I like the version that has Frogla. that because it's fun. Yeah, it's just fun to, to, you know, double lava burst somebody and then bring them back the next turn. <laughs> um, it does. This version does run the single spirit of the frog, which I I don't think any of us saw this coming as like a, a good card in an aggro style deck, but you play <laughs> this, then you zap and it gets you a lightning bolt, then you lightning bolt and it gets you like an earthen mite or a rock biter weapon. Um, and then you do that, and then you get your lava burst. It's just like it just ends up drawing you through your deck and finding you all your burn. Uh, yeah, I don't think I, I think we were thinking of it in terms of like the shaman decks that we were playing. So we were yeah. thinking you know, even decks and we were thinking Shutterwalk decks and we're just yep. like, well, but I don't want to try to make a, a late game chain like that'll never work. Definitely didn't think of the zero one two three. <laughs> nope. Nope. Yeah. I'm going to be jostling with life drinker here and say I defended spirit of the frog. I thought this card was going to be good. I was right. Well, a one of a one yeah. of good. <laughs> But it's uh yeah, it's, it's because it's so I'm... good you don't need a second one. One it, it, hitting the board <laughs> oh, once it. does sure. so much work that you don't yeah. need a second copy. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I found that this deck though is lacking a little bit in the current meta. I feel like aggro right now, just in general, is lacking. Mm -hmm. But uh it's definitely got a place if you like if you like aggressive style decks, if you like throwing spells at people's faces, this is the deck for you for sure. I went 0 and 3 with it in Brawl CM and I put it away and I haven't pulled it back out since. Have we Every figured out how Lickum works? So if you overload this turn, so you have overloaded cr crystals for next turn, does that yes. increase yes. your attack? Yes. It does? Okay. So you get two turns of I haven't played of with it, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> two turns so like, of Lickum? Yeah. So if you, uh, let's say turn two, you like load up the Lickum and then you zap something, then you just start going face with it, you'll get nine damage out of it most of the time. Hmm. Lick him so, in the face. Yep. But I, I don't know, man. I just, I found that the deck is still just missing something. I don't know. Like, there's just too many, to me, I guess, maybe it's just because I, I just ran into too many decks that were able to gain enough life that it didn't matter how much burn I threw at them. But yeah. I feel like, yeah, at some point someone's going to nail this build. I just don't think it's here yet. Hmm. And then we'll have something really, really powerful. On our hands. I think it's the issue with, with, with aggro in general right now is um is just Yeah, the control you, decks you, you can't kill them fast yeah. enough. Uh, has <laughs> yeah. it has anyone tried um just like for just for shits, has anyone tried Murloc Mage since? Because that's like the one deck I think of. I'm like, I think when it draws right, you'll kill him in time. Uh, yeah, that's probably still good. The issue with a lot of the new stuff people are trying is it it doesn't kill him in time. Yeah, yeah no, Murloc Mage will probably still kill you. Yeah. Yeah. But no one's playing it because it doesn't have any new cards in it. So. Hmm. Yeah, well, I don't. That's not stopping people from just slamming odd paladin games to to climb the ladder. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, I'm also, I mean, we always say that, like, just just always assume an asterisk there of like, yes, yeah, so you may be playing on a budget. Yes, you may not have a lot of cards. Totally understand that. We're not ripping on you for that. But if, but but if you like open like three hundred packs on day one and you're still playing odd paladin, I want to have words. Yeah, shame. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but if you uh, if you do want some new cards, especially new cards you probably didn't see making its way into any deck, Dills, mm. could you please tell me what the hell is going on with Ice Cream Shaman? Okay, Ice Cream Shaman. This is this is a meme, but I don't know. Maybe it's more than that. It's very strange. But anyway, the idea here is with Shutterwalk, you can do a lot of broken stuff. Uh, so there's this new card that got put into the game in. Uh, in this expansion called Ice Cream Peddler. Battle Cry, if you control a frozen minion, gain eight armor. Well, there's another card called the Hildnir Frost Rider from it just rolls Lich King. off the tongue. Yeah, <laughs> from, this is from Lich King, I guess, right? Uh, and it, uh, and well, Frozen Throne. And it is going to rotate pretty soon, but it's here for now, and it freezes your own board. So basically the idea here is you just shutter you do the normal shutter walk stuff where you get all the battle cries out, get them into the pool, and then you uh, and then you shutter walk 
the grumble means that the shutter walk comes back. You get more one mana shutter walks, and then you just keep going. So what it does is it just ends up gaining you like ridiculous amounts of armor. Uh, Disguise Toast played not this exact version, but a version designed not to win, but just to gain as much armor as possible. And he got over 20k armor, which is <laughs> stupid. That's just dumb. <laughs> So I played against this deck last night as mm. my as my Undertaker taunt druid. Well, you roboted just at the perfect time, right? Right at the beginning of story time. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right at the beginning. Am I, of story I'm still roboty. Yep. Yes. Yep. <laughs> All right, no, because I want to hear story time. <laughs> Well, I can't tell a story if I'm a robot. Give me a second. You're not a robot anymore. Oh, yeah. You're suddenly not oh. a robot anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, all right. So, I had not seen the Disguise Toast video. Okay. So, I saw this guy playing Shaman, and all of a sudden, he played out Plated Beetles. And I'm like, that's really weird, because normally Shutterwalk plays Keliseth. What's going mm -hmm. on here? Mm -hmm. So, it turns out he played two Plated Beetles and The Undertaker. Yep. And proceeded to then absolutely just get a ridiculous amount of armor. And I'm like, okay, I haven't actually seen this. I'm never going to fatigue because of my whole Undertaker thing in my Todrid. So I'm like, I'm not going to fatigue. I'm not going to be able to kill him. Let's see if we can just hit the turn timer or something. Like, I want to see how this game plays out. So we both, and I, like, I almost want to apologize to my opponent because I probably should have just conceded. But we both stuck it out. For an hour and 20 minutes, I started recording <laughs> just mm. to see like how long it was going to take and what was going to happen. I'm like, I want to get the end of this game. And then, so he got up to like that 1300 armor or something like that between the Undertaker death rattles going off and giving him six per dead shutter walk. And every single one of his turns took 10 to 12 minutes. Because yeah, the shutter walk animations take freaking forever. Oh. God, it took so... And then I would do my turn and take two seconds because I was literally just like, armor up, armor up. <laughs> so yep. anyways, yep. eventually, an hour and 20 minutes in, it's like the game gave up on the Shutterwalk animations. His client crashed because he got all the way halfway through the rope before he started uh, Shutterwalking on one turn. So he obviously got DC'd and came back. And then the next time it came to my turn, the game crashed on me. I like I played my Undertaker, and then the game crashed. And then by the by the time I actually was able to load back into Hearthstone, I got the message saying, "You lost your last right game due to a disconnect." I was like, "Hearthstone? <laughs> That's an hour and twenty minutes of my life I'll never get back." <laughs> so there's a there is a video now of Toast apparently also he's trying more ridiculous stuff, and apparently there's. Some sort of sequence of things that will just auto DC you and make you lose the game. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure. We'll have to do a little more research on that. But uh, there's been there's been now recorded games going over three hours because of Shutterwalk animations. Uh, I think Dane was the first one to post about this uh, in Wild. He took or no, he played a rank 25 game in Standard actually because he wanted to see if he could do. He was doing the one you're talking about with the plated beetles. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was doing this is before people figured out the ice cream thing. And he went to, yeah, like two hours and 37 minutes. So he uploaded it to his YouTube, like no edits. It's the entire game. And it's just, it's just all Shutterwalk animations. So yeah, there's uh, multiple games now that have gone up to almost three hours or over three hours now because of this stupid thing. And it's ridiculous. This version that we're displaying here though, has Sephorium bombers in it. So you will not go to three hours and do the DC thing because eventually your opponent will have a deck full of bombs uh, and they will just end up killing themselves. So, yeah, it's um, I don't I don't know. Like, did Team 5 mean for this to happen? Did they understand that this was a thing or did they not play test this exact combination of cards? What I, I'm, I'm going to sure. assume that they were unaware of this interaction. Yeah, because it just seems like when you put Shutterwalk into the game, you better test a lot of stuff every time you put out new cards with Shutterwalk, especially yeah. when you put a battle cry that reads gain eight armor. Even if yeah. you think it's so stupid because it's your own frozen minions, it's like someone's going to figure this out. Yo. Yeah. So, yeah, I, uh, it's if if <clears throat> if this becomes a thing in tournaments, it's going to be really friggin annoying. So I hope this is always stays a meme and never becomes a thing. We ain't got no one's got time for this, man. 
No one's got time for these three hour games. <laughs> I want to encourage everyone. Like, I feel kind of bad, like putting this out into the world. <laughs> Go out, maybe play it once and then put it away. Okay. Once <laughs> you do the thing, you've done it. You've seen the thing. Stop. Now it's time to stop. Yeah, just... Or if they could just add like a skip animations mode or a skip animations ah. button. <laughs> yeah, so there is now there is currently a a workaround for skipping the animations, which is to close the game client and then reopen it. When you reconnect to the game, your animations will be skipped. But that's <laughs> I, I love that closing the game and reopening it is faster than sitting through the animations. Yeah, but like that's... I said, ten to twelve yeah. minutes a turn. Yep. No, oh, it's crazy. Yeah. I would not expect to see this stay. No. And but you know how people are, man. They love to distribute pain to others so. <laughs> trolls oh yeah like every this. every turn that he went through i got like a oh my god you're still here like wow emote and i was like i'm not going anywhere buddy <laughs> you're not killing me i'm sitting here on my 70 health you're working <laughs> for it out. yeah you exactly yep. <laughs> you chose to play this deck we're gonna play it to the end <laughs> yep uh, well, moving into Warlock, I always like to see what the hell Zoo looks like after a, an expansion launch, and uh, there is a Rastakhan Zoo seeing play. There's not a ton of new cards, but uh, Grim Rally and Serenite Taskmaster have uh, have found a home in this new type of Zoo. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the, you got a lot of like little guys that you play out early, and if you get like any somewhat bigger board later, you can Grim Rally and kill people. So it's yep. like a like a mini little bloodlust, maybe if you can ever get a board to stick. So it's a, yeah, it's a cool. murder lust because you have to kill a minion to do it. <laughs> yeah, but I think I think we're gonna see. Like I haven't run into that much zoo, uh, and the zoo I have run into is still just basically the old school heel zoo. Um, but uh, I do I do see a lot of people messing around with like this control discard warlock thing. At first, everyone was doing the quest. Right, and now people have kind of moved on, but the the zoo deck will obviously never die. Yeah, yeah. The, the Grim Rally thing, is, like, I'm, I don't know why I didn't think about this um, originally. Is is comboing it with Doom Guard, so you get the damage in ahead of time when you already have a board, and then you just Grim Rally the Doom Guard and attack with everything else that's now buffed. Sure. Well, just didn't cross my mind until I actually saw it happen. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of the. Uh, Speaking, actually, never mind. Sorry, I thought this next deck had the uh, had the the quest in it, but it does not. Never mind. No, no, no. that's what I'm saying. There's, there's everyone was trying the quest. The quest is not the quest is not the jam. The jam is Soul Warden and just playing good Warlock cards. So, uh, if you look in, you got the only discard stuff is Shriek, Soulfire, and Doomguard. And outside of that, you're not doing any other any other discarding. But those three cards are really, really strong, right? When you play them, right? The, the effect that they have as far as tempo is concerned is really good. So then the idea here is that you're just playing a bunch of really good Warlock cards. And then when you do discard some stuff, it's fine because you just Soul Warden them back later. Uh, so like in the past, when you played a version of like this kind of a Warlock, if you, let's say you discarded your Blood Reaver Gul'dan, you were really upset, right? Now you don't care because you're just like, that's fine. I'll get back my Blood Reaver Gul'dan later on. So it's just like it, it shores up the weakness of what discarding. Yeah, takes away the yeah. downsides to yeah. Soul Fire and Doom Guarding. Yeah. Yeah, because at some point you're going to play a six man. The, the fact is, it's six man is six six. You yeah. don't even really pay that much of a penalty to then just draw three cards. Like, what? That's nutty. And you know specifically what cards are going to get back. So uh, Zalea was playing a lot of this deck, and the other cool thing about it is that you, like, uh, you can shriek away like soul fires on purpose, and then later on get a bunch of soul fires back, and then just burst people down, right? So, turns out like multiple soul fires is pretty good. <laughs> this is this is cool. I have not I have not seen this deck. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty strong. Uh, it's also see... got the skull of Minari with the Void Lord package and the Doom Guards and stuff like that. So and the giants. Yeah, it's also got the giant. So it's also so got like turn stuff. four giant plan. It's got like a lot of different ways to just kind of just murder people. This is uh, this is what you seem to strong. need right now to to stand toe to toe with other decks. You need big end game stuff. Yeah, lots. Of, it's, this has lots of mid game threats, and then it can also turn into Gul'dan later on and just finish. Bring you back all those things. Yep. 
Yep. It's a really, really strong deck right now. I, I also think this might be one of the, this might be one of the top tier contenders. It's not very popular yet, but I think people are going to come around to this one. Mm. Yeah. Everyone just got so locked in on the quest, you know. It's exciting. We want it to work. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Make it work. It's one of those things. It's but the like I've gotten it to work, and even after getting the quest done, it's like the three twos each turn weren't enough. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Uh, but yeah, other people are dropping twelve health divine shield taunt butthole yeah, ogres. I know, it's nutty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> butthole ogre. Yeah, yeah, butthole ogres. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're like. <laughs> Check out my little imp guys. Yeah, yeah nice. I got two. Work. I got six four worth of stats for free at the end of the turn. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, Undertaker right. is now a Hadronox. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I reject your reality and substitute mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, but that's okay. You know, if you're sitting there being a little, a uh, little bummed out because you didn't want, you you never wanted to see a Void Lord and a Gul'dan ever again. Don't worry, Odd Warrior is alive and well. Yeah, I threw this in there because uh, they're using quite a few new cards, actually. They did basically what we thought they would do with the whole dragon package. So the Lancer, the Scorcher, the Crowd Roaster that we were talking about earlier. So they basically put that um, dragon package into it and shorted it up. I put this in here only because we had literally nothing else to talk about with Warrior. Rush Warrior, still real bad. People are trying <laughs> to make it work, but they're not yeah. being very successful. I've run up against a few and I've just trounced them. So. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but this but, this deck though is really strong. I've there's yeah. there's been some games where I've turned into uh, Rexar and they've still taken me down to the very end and almost beat me. Uh, yeah, which that was never possible before for Odd Warrior. Like you turn into Rexar against Odd Warrior on turn six and you just win mm -hmm. because they just can't kill all your stuff. This time, like they just seem to have just enough just to keep going, and I'm just like, stop! Like why? <laughs> why do you keep killing my stuff? Uh, so yeah, it's it's a. I think this deck is very strong. Going to stick around. Yeah, the first time I went up against one, you know, before I had experience under my belt as Odd Mage, I was thinking, finally, I get to outkill all your stuff against the Odd War. And then I was like, nope, never mind. They still have more ways to clear everything. Uh, yeah, I lose this game. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a horrible matchup for Odd yeah, Mage. It's, a, it's horrendous. I never yeah. want to play that matchup again. I, <laughs> I'm. Full disclosure, I auto conceded yeah. against an odd warrior today. All right, there uh, you go. All right. I was just like, I don't want to play this game. I don't want to play this game. I'm out. There's a lot. This is one of those. This is still one of those polarizing style decks. Um, I just gonna have never want to see it again. And terrible matchups. I never want to see another odd warrior, guys. This is it. This is the deck. This is where I draw the line. So, so let me just, just for, just, just to clarify, when you click over to matchups, this deck has an 80% win rate against odd mage. 13% win rate against OTK DK Paladin. 7.5% win rate against Kingsbane Rogue. 17% win rate against Shutterwalk. 74 against Z Like nothing is like 55. You know? like, no. uh, Spell Hunter, 57%. I either win or I lose. Yeah. Spell Hunter is the only kind of interesting matchup. Uh, yeah, 57. There you go. Sure. Oh, sure. God. Like, I just, I can't. I don't get it. I can't do this to myself. Like I can't go play Odd Warrior because this polarization. I, I would just go insane. I, I would feel like I'm just hitting the button and hoping I get the right matchup. Yeah, that would drive me bananas. Yep. But yeah. decks like this are like this is one of the reasons why people don't have fun in metas. Um. It yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone in chat yeah. is asking about Rexar. And no, I'm, I'm talking about I'm playing the hunter against an Odd Warrior. If I turn into Rexar, I generally win. There you go. Yep. Clarification. Cool. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Yeah, a lot of a lot of odd warriors. I have seen some just straight up dragon warriors, which seem cool. Mm -hmm. Um I'd like to Yeah. I'd like to see that expanded upon. I don't think they're there yet. I don't think they're they they seem a little half baked. So I've also seen a lot of Reddit posts where they're like, I played the two mana draw two random dragons and I got two of the friggin' Temporis or whatever. Uh, <laughs> I love oh man two turns then take two turns yeah <laughs> like so, like I saw like three of those posts I was like Jesus guys we get it you got two bad dragons okay it's fine I had someone play a, a Nosdormu against me this week uh, it was I think it was discovered <laughs> or something in a dragon warrior I forget exactly how how they ended up with it but I was just like that what huh okay yeah, the regular dragon warrior is running that two mana draw two dragons random dragons yeah uh, but uh that yeah that version just is not as good as this one yeah. Um, I'll share my own crazy game story real fast, and you you two already know this, but um, I uh, earlier today uh, I won against a Kingsbane Rogue as Odd Mage only because I found Black Howl Gunspire 
off of an astromancer and that's how i got lethal was off of, was off of pinging my own uh black wow. howl gunspire and then dropping baron geddon uh so I, I pinged it for three to face then baron geddon did two to face but also hit the black howl gunspire which did another three to face and that did the damage i needed to win that makes Sweet. me so happy yep i would have lost the next turn if that didn't happen so there you go well done. i just wanted jocelyn to be here for the story <laughs> the only person, oh i'm here for it gary i am here for it i'm pretty sure at this point you're just playing hearthstone for sweet black owl gunspires uh, yeah it's stories. the new eye for an eye i'm not gonna lie <laughs> fair fair uh well before we get into the hearthstone news uh which is a little older at this point but we haven't had a chance to talk about it let's thank our sp- our second sponsor today me undies they are back this is it. You, it. We're still early. It's still early December, folks. You can get your shopping done early. You can finally do it. And you can get your friends and loved ones the most comfortable underwear or pajamas or both. Jocelyn is wearing, wearing a MeUndies pajama nice. pants right now. <laughs> yep. So yeah, the, I, the onesie is like, every time I get home, it just calls to me. It's like, yes. it's onesie time. <laughs> I am not wearing my me on these pajama pants right now only because I wore them so much that Katie went, it's, it's time to wash them. Sure. It's See, time to wash them. I, I hate laundry so much. And I literally have been doing laundry like two or three times a week. As soon as the basket's even remotely close to full, I'm like, oh, it's me on these laundry time. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I get that clean laundry pants again. I've had them for literally a week and I just, I love them. I like live in them. They're so comfortable. I do have to share like a, a, a word of warning. If oh, no. you do purchase the onesie, it may affect your uh, it may affect your motivation. <laughs> it, it may make you just want to Netflix and chill every night. Uh, but I was actually, I actually uh, came down with a little bit of a of a bug the last couple of days. I had to work like one of the days in between or whatever, two actually two of the days in between. But it was so nice to just like soup tea onesie like netflix and just like just be chilling out like it's it was the and perfect they're like thing. i don't know if the onesie is the same but the pants are like cool but warm at the same time yeah like, i yeah. never overheat but i never get cold like it's, i don't need a blanket yeah i'm not yeah but I, if i put one on i don't overheat at that point I yeah it, it, it I is how you do it, it I, me undies i don't get it it's that same micromodal fabric it's 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 like it, it's the <laughs> yeah, it's what the, it is the okay. buzzword they've got, they've got some uh new technology as well some science yep, yep. <laughs> so go check them out you can get uh the onesies you can get the lounge pants in fun holiday prints uh this year uh it's all made from that micromodal fabric it's three times softer than cough uh than, than cotton if you haven't uh, felt it before uh, and they still have the offer for our listeners so you can get 15% off and free shipping if you are a first time purchaser uh, of MeUndies by going to MeUndies.com slash TAC again that's 15% off free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee by going to MeUndies.com slash TAC now let's fire up the soundboard which has honestly been collecting some dust with all of the not segment jumping we've been doing and talk some Hearthstone news good news everyone uh if i was creating a headline to get the most clicks or a thumbnail to get the most views i would say it's the end of hct hct dead in the water it kind of is I mean, it is it is the end of hct yeah, but, it is. but but if that was the headline the assumption would be nothing is replacing it hmm yeah uh, no it's just it's getting an overhaul yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, it is. It is getting overhaul, and we're not entirely clear on what that overhaul is. Uh, we weren't clear we last week. A lot of information, though. We did get a ton of information. We just didn't get a couple we of got, very important bits. Yeah, we got kind of like an overview, but we didn't get a detailed look at what that's actually going to, uh, or what I guess 2019 in terms of Hearthstone esports is actually going to really encompass. I guess is the best word for it. Like. So basically what they said was that um, HCT, the feedback they got over the last year was that it was hard for people to follow. uh, It wasn't accessible to new players and it was unsustainable for pros, which is a lot of stuff that we have kind of said over the course of the show. Like I I think statements. Yeah, they did. They did a pretty good job, I think, of of listening to the community and taking that feedback. Um, So they basically said that the world championship this year for 2018 is going to go ahead as planned, but there's going to be a transition period from now until April. So 
that was kind of what we got in terms of details was we got like a rule book and details and everything on the transition period. But then they didn't really go into too much detail of what we're going to be transitioning into. So they did tell us that we're going to have uh, three tiers and that they're going from 2.8 million in prizes up to 4 million in prizes. But they again didn't tell us uh, where that prize money was going to be distributed. So of the tiers, we've got your tier one qualifiers, which are going to be mostly online tournaments that are run by Blizzard using a third party program. So again, no return to tournament mode. They're just going to use whoever they end up partnering partnering with, whether it's Battlefy or Smash or whatever. Um, some third party is going to be used to organize the tournaments, but they're going to be run by Blizzard. They're not region locked, so they're going to be m running multiple every week. And you can play regardless of where you are. You can play in any tournament, just whatever fits your schedule, which was a big complaint from a lot of people was just scheduling in general. It was like, I can't take two days off of work in order to play in an online qualifier to come up through the challenger program. Like this isn't really helpful. So now you can play like if playing an APAC tournament through the night is <laughs> the best time for you to play Hearthstone, then there's probably a tournament for you now. This uh, is actually kind of exciting for someone like me, though, because I was never, ever going to try to qualify yeah. for an HCT event. But if I could just win one of these and then it moves me to the next level, that yeah, seems so like something to give a shot to, right? Yeah, you need one win in a qualifier. Mm -hmm. And then that bumps you up into Tier 2, and Tier 2 are the live global tournaments. So we get three of these a year. And they're invite only, and they're made up of all the winners of the qualifiers, as well as, um, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, but uh, the master's program is also going away because this new system gets rid of HCT points completely. So there now, there is no like ladder stuff you have to do. There is no point accumulation. You just win one qualifier and you get into these invite only tournaments. At each of these tournaments, there's going to be uh, $250,000 available to be won. Sounds great. And then they said that success in tier two will open the door to the ultimate level of competition. And this is where it gets a little sketchy for me. I'm I mean, be I'm honest. guessing they mean like top eighting one of these or something like that, or top 16 -ing or, or something like that, right? Because they still need a decent sized pool for this next part. Well, yeah. So, and success, <laughs> not necessarily. So, Tier three is what they're calling. I actually, I called it Premier League, but I don't think they actually called it a league. Um, I think they called it Premier Play or something in yeah, the blog post. I think so. But um, basically, this is going to be seasonal round robin online competition split into regions. So you can assume there's going to be one for NA, EU, APAC, and China, like our regions have been, um, that will feature the best and most compelling Hearthstone players in the world. So to me, what this says is it sounds like at least for the first time, and this is why I'm kind of, uh, I wish that we had gotten more information about 2019, because I think that in terms of prize money and in terms of player pool, this is the biggest question mark for a lot of pro players. And because we don't know how big the Premier League is going to be. We don't know how much they're going to get paid to play in around like weekly round robin games. Um, we don't know what the finale is going to look like, and we don't know who's going to actually make up the first Premier League players. They haven't said, like, the fact that they included the wording of most compelling Hearthstone players makes me think that they're going to be pulling in players like Kibler, which, okay, yeah, he brings in a lot of eyeballs, but is that really the best thing for Hearthstone as a competitive esport? And I think that this first season of the Premier League is also, like... And again, not enough information to really figure this out. But if, say, we're dealing with a lot of other leagues we've seen in esports, generally they have a fairly small pool, so somewhere between eight and 16 teams. Hearthstone might be slightly bigger because, you know, Hearthstone's an individual thing instead of a team sport. Um, but these leagues aren't necessarily big. And then when it comes to like promotion relegation time, which is how I assume that tier two and tier three are going to feed into each other. Then it's like, are they, you know, putting two spots up for grabs in the Premier League? Are they putting half of the spots up for grabs? Like, how many of these spots are going to, or how many of these players are really going to be relegated down? And if most of the money is to these players who are going to have to play weekly for an entire season, like, you've got to assume that this has to be, like, salary-ish. 
Wait, where does it say weekly? Huh? Does it say weekly? I thought it just says seasonal round robin online competition. Well, yeah, but if we're like the only other round robin online competition they've done is HGG, right? Yeah. And Global Games was weekly. So. Sure. Okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's an assumption, but. It's yeah. But awesome. that's the thing. Like, all of this is assumption because they didn't really give us any yeah. 2019. Like, when I hear there's also calling players, I think of like last year's world champion and stuff like that. Like, like I, I, I would think that they mean like people with like interesting stories and stuff like that, not necessarily like big streamers but also i do know that team five has uh kind of like given a lot of things to just big streamers just for being big streamers so yeah we'll see what that really means it it, it make does make sense if that's what that means too just because yeah get more eyeballs on the event right like yeah I, yeah i don't uh, i don't know why you would obfuscate the information otherwise um like this seems yeah, so but it's, it sounds to me like they're just trying they're still just trying to iron out exactly what they all mean but like i to me well, I and what i is what i would like to see stuff. yeah is like world champs i want to see like the two and three star masters like the people who have really proven themselves over the last little while in hearthstone esports that's who i want to see too yeah but the fact that they they didn't just say the best hearthstone players in the world if they said the best hearthstone players in the world i'd be like great you know our top hct point earners like those are the guys that are going to get the first spots but are those necessarily the most exciting Hearthstone players to watch? Not always. You know, some of them sit, don't emote, don't do anything, rope every turn versus nah. like the the purples even of the world yeah. who, you know, get emotional and are entertaining to watch. Like the Or like Sinto is another example of a Hearthstone player who's super fun to watch, but didn't... This, this also could mean nothing though too, right? It could just mean like... <laughs> the best and most compelling like by them being the best they also are the most compelling like it could just be like we're using two adjectives to describe the same pool of players like it you know yeah, I, the, like we just need to hear more information the other thing we're not we're, we're not referencing is the elephant in the room which are there are a lot of rumors going around that quite a few of these slots are going to be invite only and it's going to be popular personalities not the merit of the actual how good they are as a player play yeah that, that's mm -hmm. the big rumor going around right now um and because of how murky this announcement is it makes it seem like those rumors are true to me yeah sure i think that would be like i hope that's not the case because i think that would be going against what they said at the very beginning which is not accessible to new players they said that as one of the feedbacks if you then start inviting a bunch of people who just are already popular then you've gone against one of the first like tenants that you just said right at the very beginning well and so. that it kind of sounds like the qualifiers and the live global tournaments are accessible to new players but i'm just not sure how accessible this tier three competition is going to be um it's kind well, of for people. me it's the big question mark in yeah. all of this and, and and we're assuming most of the money is there because the yeah only, they've, they've said four million dollars total prize money going up for whatever they're calling this yeah, uh, seven hundred fifty thousand of it is accounted so for. So there's, in tier there's yeah. three million two hundred fifty thousand dollars that still needs to get doled out somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so well, Which assuming is why it, I think they're going to be paying these premier players quite a lot of money in order to you know dedicate their time to Hearthstone because they're also they talked about uh, the one money thing that they did talk about in terms of this tier three premier competition is that they were going to give the players performance based bonuses and also invites to all of the tier two live global tournaments. So when they talk about invites, um, like I don't, do they, does that include like travel and stuff or are they just like, oh yeah, you get an entry spot. <laughs> like uh, again, like, and if let's say the invites include travel, so they're sending their premier players to these events, then does the travel money come out of like the prize pool money? Like I, it's one thing to say like $4 million, but then they didn't talk a lot about where that was actually going to go. So I'm hoping that it is in the tier one in the qualifiers, like to give people an incentive beyond just winning to actually play in these tournaments. Like if these sure. tournaments are yeah, worth a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. If, a lot of money. That's now, where I'd thing. like to see the money go out, but I, I have a feeling it's going to be going into this tier three stuff. So, the way it works, like, like I, I'm not against having a lot of people who are well known, but I do want them to still have to like uh, somehow earn their way there. Like, if you think about like Magic and how you have like your Magic Pro Tour guys who gain like you know certain statuses and things like that, 
And then like, let's say you're like a hall of famer, like you can just kind of go to grand prix if you want to and stuff like that. Like that's fine, but they like earn their way there through competition. So if they, if they have it work like that, and at some point you've kind of like reached the plateau of, you know, Oh, Tice, like you've won so many frigging European championships that we just consider you like a hall of fame player. But if they're like, Raynad, you have a lot of people watch your stream. You're a Hall of Fame player. Then I'm going to be pissed. So, like, there's ways to do this that are totally fine and okay with me, and I want to see – I think it does help to see names that you know. Uh, it's just if they're not competitors, then that's going to really sour a lot of people, I think, on this. So, like, it's just – I hope they're careful going forward. Uh, but you're right. Like, the fact that the details are being held back a little bit makes me feel like – uh, we don't want to announce the thing that you're not going to like just yet. Uh, so I don't know. I hope I'm, I hope I'm putting my foot in my mouth here, but like there's, there's the right and wrong way to do this. I hope they do it the right way. I'm going to, I'm going to have faith for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, my- you know, speaking of things that they may not necessarily want to tell us right now, cause it might put a sour taste in our mouth. They did tell us conquest is being retired. Thumbs up, but no they- thumbs in no th- direction. <laughs> Put your thumbs well, away. Thumbs like this. And Our thumbs are currently yeah. we're we're uh, freaking Joaquin Phoenix. We're not sure which way we're moving our thumb mm-hmm. right now. Yep. Fair enough. Fair enough. I I like I like Last Hero standing in the current meta because I don't feel like Last Hero standing is as bad and oppressive as it had been in the past when there are only a few viable decks. I feel like our meta is varied enough now that I enjoy watching Last Hero standing tournaments, but. Um, anyways, that's not what they're replacing Conquest with, or at least we assume that's not what they're playing Conquest with, because then they would have just come out and said, we're replacing Conquest with Last Hero Standing, but they didn't. They said, we are going to replace it with something to be announced later. (laughs) But then they, didn't they also reference Ladder here? Yes, they, well, they they said, that's what makes me nervous. Yeah. They Uh said they wanted to make the tournament experience more like Ladder. And that makes me think that they are going to use the model they introduced over in China, which is a best of three with only one deck and a sideboard. Now, with a sideboard and one deck, that I I can find reasons to think that that will be compelling to watch, but I just don't know if that will be compelling to watch for a whole year. But like, I do find it really interesting when you watch like a Magic tournament where everybody brings one deck, and then it's it kind of makes what deck you bring be kind of interesting because. You either bring what's considered the top tier deck or you bring some sort of counter to that and you try to meta bust it and that kind of thing. And there's a lot of interesting stuff that goes along with it. Also, if there's one deck that maybe gets destroyed with like a single sideboard card, then you can't bring that. So it becomes like an interesting thing of like which deck has the most ability to be adjusted without losing its kind of core, its game plan. There could be a lot of interest in something like that. I just don't know if that'll hold for a full year of competition i I don't know again i'm gonna like i'm gonna be like this and then (laughs) i have to watch this go down before i really can uh because that feels like a really untested format to just suddenly be like boom that's it you know yeah Yeah. and so this is it's kind of interesting because i feel like they heard the feedback that people wanted the competitive esport experience to be more like ladder i i feel like they they heard that and i mean i know on this show we've said that but I feel like what we wanted was to change what ladder looked like, not change what tournaments looked like to mirror ladder. You know, like mm. we wanted a ban on ladder or, you know, some sort of more than a best of one or, you know, like we wanted to be able to play a tournament in the client. And they kind of took that feedback and instead said, OK, well, then we're going to get rid of best of fives and we're going to get rid of multiple decks. And now your tournaments are more like ladder. We win. And we're like, no, no, you did the. <laughs> You went Worst the possible direction that they, in my mind, in my mind, it's it's not a yeah. fact. This is my opinion, well, uh, but but yeah. I mean, I've been playing a lot of MTG Arena lately, and essentially that, like playing the the competitive ladder where it's a best of three with one deck, and then in between I sideboard is pretty compelling. Um, like it's very interesting. You play the first game with yeah. the standard deck, and then you make some decisions. Like I do find it very interesting. So like I just don't know. Like I think we've, we've gotten so used to like multiple decks matter in Hearthstone that it might be hard to wrap our heads around one deck only mattering. And like, that's why I need to see it play out before I can really, like, I feel like what I need to do is like run a little mini tournament with some of my friends or something and like, just do it that way and see, is that actually compelling in Hearthstone form? Like, it's just weird because it's 30 card decks and 
you know. Yeah, so that's yeah. Different. With sideboarding, I think it'd be really interesting. Without sideboarding, I think it would be horrendously boring, and I would be, be out after like the first week. You can't do it without sideboarding, can you? Yeah. That- I don't think so. <laughs> like, it would, I, I don't know. I feel like we would just see. I don't know, because right now there is a lot of a lot of options for competitive decks, yeah. so maybe it wouldn't be so bad. So but, you remember like forever ago when Hearthstone was still in beta and we didn't really know what the tournament format was going to be. And I played that tournament and I got second place to Chalky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that tournament, we did use just one deck, but in between matches and games, you could adjust it however you liked. Yep. Like they didn't have like a here's five card sideboard. They just said, you are Warlock, you are Shaman, you are whatever. You could play the first game, then you could back out and then just like do some stuff to try to counter their their decks. And I did a lot of that during the tournament. Like by the end of the tournament, my deck did not look like it looked at the very beginning because I made a bunch of changes and made the deck slightly better, I thought, going forward. And it was really fun and interesting. But it's just been forever since I've done it. So I'm not sure if I still like it or how good it is now after knowing conquest and last year standing for so long, so. anything that allows some sort of deck manipulation, either between individual games or individual matchups mm-hmm. interests me a lot. Um, yeah. cause I think one of the big things that's been missing from professional, from professional Hearthstone is deck building and showcasing it as a skill or requiring it to be a skill. Yeah. Uh, like what cards you choose as your sideboard are going to be really interesting to talk about. I think all that stuff, because a lot of times what you get with last year's standing conquest is like, here's the lineup. It's the four best decks. This one will probably get banned. And then it just feels like there's not. And then you just watch the same matchups over and over again, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to hold out judgment on this until we really see it. But. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's my thing. Like, I, my, my gut reaction on Twitter was this is the, one of the stupidest announcements I've ever seen. I've calmed down a little bit, but I still think this is a, a pretty lousy announcement. Cause I don't, like I said, we're sitting here with our thumbs in the middle because there's not enough information here to know if we should be excited or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I will say though, like I'm excited just that it's changing because this season we were excited from last season to this season about the change, and then this season was just like let me just you know just beat you over the face with Hearthstone all all year long. Yeah, uh, tour stops. I think was a yeah tour stops was a big misstep because of all the travel that it required without the Masters program actually coming to fruition kind of ever throughout the whole year. And uh, that is one thing that they did talk about too with HCT points going away. The master system is also going away. So um, instead of having your points accumulate over three seasons, since they're getting rid of the, um, since they're getting rid of it completely, they announced literally the day before DreamHack Winter that DreamHack Winter, the HCT tour stop that's happening, uh, I believe this weekend in Philadelphia, as well as the playoffs and the winter championships All of those will still count for points like they would have otherwise. And then your accumulated points over those four seasons. So from the start of 2018 all the way through until March 31st of 2019, if you accumulate the 200 points that was required to become a three-star master or 175 two-star master, whatever the case, they also added another tier to the master's program. Um, Those players are going to get um, equal or greater value rewards. So um, that includes appearance fees at next year's 2019 tournaments, as well as um, invites to all three tournaments. If you are a, uh, I guess, 125 points, then you get one invite. If you're 150 points, I think you get two invites, 175, all three, 200, all three, and then just varying appearance um, fees for those different levels. So I'm glad that they are actually rewarding people who did the work to accumulate all of these HCT points. But um, in terms of the master's program going away, they really should have announced it a lot sooner because there's a lot of people that weren't planning on traveling because they expected, first of all, ladder to still count. Ladder no longer counts. Uh, That was a change made November 30th. And then, um, yeah, there's no other tour stops coming. So they were, again, expecting January, February, March tour stops that are not happening. There's DreamHack Winter and ACT Philadelphia, the last tour stops. DreamHack Winter's already happened, obviously. And, uh, yeah, then the playoffs. So, um, I mean, I you had that, to rip the Band-Aid off at some point, though. Yeah, I, but I they go. probably shouldn't have ripped the Band-Aid off the day before it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. there's no perfect day to do it, unfortunately. In my opinion, there's no perfect day to do it, so... I think you just do it. You try to make good. And uh, I think the latter thing is ultimately a good thing. 
Yeah, yeah. That, that's the kind of thing I think they were probably looking at, and they're just like, well, we can delay, but does it does it make it worse yeah. in other avenues? And it, I mean, with the old HCT format, there were always things coming up, so it was kind of gonna suck. I feel like, yeah, more or less. Always no gonna be bad I feel like they. All that kind I mean, of to be that. honest, I feel like the latter change they made it happen. Like I think the right way to do it would have been um, probably either March 31st, like have it count all the way through the transitional period. But I feel like they then worried that there would be too many points on the board and then they'd have to pay out too much money. Hmm. That's not my take on that. I think it's just, there I don't were a lot of people. players. There were a lot of players that were right around the kind of 150 points mark that if they had three to four more ladder seasons available to them would have very easily been 175 hmm. to 200 points over four seasons yeah but then they would have gotten like a thousand dollar appearance fee for you know for three tournaments, three tournaments. So that's yeah $3, but then they would also per... put in like hundreds of hours of work for that i think this is ultimately better for those players to be like hey you don't got to do that for the next three months like that probably is worth more money to those players than a thousand dollars for three uh, like tournaments like i uh, to me. Well, I'm not talking like, from a player perspective. I'm talking from like Blizzard's perspective, like how many dollars they would actually have to pay out for that program. If we're talking like right now, there's Hunter Ace who's got more than 200 points. So they have to pay $2,500. If they opened it up for another four seasons and had to, or sorry, four, yeah, four ladder seasons, so four more months, then they could be looking at 100 players that actually hit that 200 points so then all of a sudden that's a much bigger expense than paying hunter ace possibly i just I, yeah i don't that's not the take that i have on it but uh, yeah that's okay we can have different takes mm -hmm. yeah I, I, it seems to me like it's just like they know that they have to stop this at some point and there's no perfect way to do it and it's just like let's just stop forcing the players to have to do this grind if it's not going to matter anymore like the moment we know that's not going to matter. We should probably just tell everybody. I would so, like to, uh, if anyone was within spitting distance of that, that isn't Hunter Race, to tweet at TAC Podcast and let us know your thoughts on this. Sure, yeah, I'd love to hear what they, yeah, they're, the, the pros actual thought, like, would you be happier if you could do three more months of grind to earn these last little bits, or are you happier this way? It's interesting. I, I feel like, for me personally, I'd be like, okay, thank you for giving me hundreds of hours of my life back <laughs> to not have to do something that's not going to matter beyond this period. So, well, yeah. it also guarantees them the invites to the tier two, right? So then they also wouldn't have to grind a whole bunch of open tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. I, actually, that's that's another thing I'd like to hear from a pro's perspective on is because I know that they didn't like grinding the tournaments when you had to get like your one win per month or whatever. So like they would have to play mm. tournaments until they got one win. In this scenario, it sounds like you do still have to kind of get a win. But if you get a win, then are you like good for three months and then you can just stop doing them? And then like, I think, so. yeah, because then you would qualify for that seasonal land. Right. So yeah. then I think once you qualify, you're done, because if you win two tournaments in the same season, I don't think that, like it's not like you can carry over a win <laughs> to the next season mm -hmm. from, from kind of what the announcement. But if you like went, yeah, see, this to me, it feels like the compelling and best thing like previous season people who did well we just kind of tell them that they're coming back again the next season without having to qualify over and over and over again so i don't know it's again yeah we're gonna have to like see how, how it plays out for a full year mm -hmm. yep um before we take an email i want to thank our patrons supporting us over at patreon.com slash tac uh this episode we have some newer ones i think i want to thank brendan g and rob g also i never do this but we got a new patron while we were recording so since i have my inbox open <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Big thanks to Goldie and Beanie. Just became a two dollar patron. Thank you, Goldie and Beanie. I believe this uh, one, either Goldie and or Beanie, were in the chat room earlier. So thank you very much. And if I thank you a second time because I didn't mark you down in the doc that I keep track of for thanking people, so be it. <laughs> so uh, if you like the show, if you like what we're doing here, and you'd like to support us, the best way to support the podcast is by visiting that Patreon. Again, it is patreon.com slash TAC, and everything helps, whether it's a, it's a dollar or more. We very much appreciate it. So thank you to everyone uh, signing up, especially around the holidays. We know you're, you're, you're buying sweet underpants and, and luggage for your, uh, for your loved ones using hopefully the code TAC, uh, but we also appreciate you supporting the Patreon. Now let's, uh, let's take a question before we wrap this up. Hello. Hello, it's me. 
Hello. Um, just quickly, do you get my message? Yep. Oh. Hello, brother. <laughs> you can send your emails to tacpodcast at gmail.com, or if you're a patron, you can just go to the Patreon Discord and drop a question in the question uh, text channel, and that's exactly what Brain Boy did on the Patreon Discord, and asked, since Rossicon just came out, are there any cards, specifically legendaries, that you feel are significantly better or worse than you expected? Uh, my, my first thought was just Zul'jin because it was like, yeah, he's going to be good, but I'm not going to be using him until after the standard rotation. And, uh, I was wrong. He's in every hunter right now. Every single hunter alongside Rexar. Yeah. Yeah. Zul'jin would be my first, my first go-to is like super surprising. Like just how freaking good he is. Like I did, I definitely did think, okay, that's a good effect, but I didn't think it was going to be, you know, top tier, whatever. Uh, also, just the other hunter cards. I know he said specifically legendaries, but just blood scalp strategist and mass contender. Like, didn't really didn't see those coming. Uh, but they they're here and they're real. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot. There aren't really that many legendaries that are kind of like smacking me in the face. Is super powerful right now outside of Zuljin and and obviously we talked a lot tonight as well about Undertaker. Um, I knew Undertaker was going to be good, but I don't think I I saw the like crazy druid stuff and shaman stuff coming um but yeah i'm trying to think of one that i thought was going to be super amazing that ended up being bad uh i'll say crag while the frog looked really freaking good but mm-hmm. the deck that he's in has kind of fallen flat to me that that aggro shaman like we talked about it as mm-hmm. being a deck but i think it's not actually that good yeah i i think i don't I think it's necessarily Crackwall's fault. I think the archetype as a whole is, is, but it's the deck he ended up in. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 But, I mean, it's it's also like the like his spirit. It's like the spirit. It's a good card in a deck that's just not powerful enough. Oh, you yeah. know what? Zentimo too. Like I thought Sean was getting all these really yeah. great things, and Zentimo hasn't really found a, a niche yet. So give it, give, give it time. You never know. I, I yeah. I think Zentimo's effect is always going to be kind of there. Uh, it might even be another expansion or something like that but i'm, I'm, I'm wondering yeah. if oh sorry go ahead jocelyn i, I was just going to say that on the topic of another expansion that we might see a lot of these legendaries that we think are kind of not that great right now just with the rotation like getting rid of quests and getting rid of mm-hmm. um death knights might open up some of that right. space for some of these cards to shine yeah, yeah. i think that's that's going to be huge when we lose quests and death knights everything's going to shift mm-hmm. in yep. a huge way and uh, I mean, also like other things, looking historically at other expansions, another thing that could make some of these shine is obviously it's week one. I'm not calling for the nerf of anything, but there may be nerfs at some point before the standard rotation. And if that happens, uh, some of these cards uh, might now stand a chance. The other thing in my brain is we've really slowed down. You know, if aggro decks come back and start balancing the scales a little bit, if, if that happens mid range may find a foothold um sure. and a lot of these shaman cards i feel like would would work in a mid-range deck if there was breathing room for mid-range right now mm-hmm. i think yeah a lot of the problem too with shaman specifically stems from shutterwalk just being so powerful it's really hard to to compete with that yeah, yeah it's hard to do anything yeah. different yeah yeah well, yeah, when you think about it, it's Shutterwalk. It's like, uh, redo a thing, you, uh, everything you did, all game that you planned, that you've been working towards, and then Kragwa is uh, redo things you did last turn. Yeah. So you can only do so much in a single turn versus how many battle cries you can yeah. load up onto Shutterwalk over a whole game. I have heard, though, that even Shaman is still pretty strong, just... It's not very popular right now. But. Yeah, uh, you know, the la- we didn't talk about Token Shaman really at all during Boomsday, no. but it was one of the top decks for climbing the ladder throughout the entire expansion. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Yep, and it could always, always come back strong. Yeah, it's just that it doesn't change. It didn't change. It's kind of boring. It's kind of like it, Zoo's always there. We're just kind of done talking about Zoo. <laughs> so. Yep. Go listen to old episodes, I guess. I, I I don't usually think of Angry Chicken episodes as evergreen content, but there are certain decks where, uh, yeah, you could probably go back and listen to an old episode and get everything you need to get. But uh, this episode's already gone long, so we're going to move uh, extra questions and whatnot to future episodes. Keep them coming, tacpodcast at gmail.com. Again, we have the, uh, the question channel up on the Patreon Discord uh, for current patrons. And if you become a new one, you, if you have your Discord linked up to Patreon, just bam, you magically get added. 
So go check that out. Thanks again, speaking of our patrons, for the support, everybody. If you want to support the show, it's patreon.com slash TAC. If you want to support us for free, you can also drop us a five-star review on iTunes. That always helps us find these listeners. And a huge thanks to our producers. Thank you to Declan H. and Sean C. for the support. Uh, we very much appreciate it, you too. Uh, other than that, follow the show on Twitter at TAC Podcast. Dills, before we go, where can everybody find your work? Uh, check me out on twitch.tv slash Willie Dills and at Willie Dills on Twitter. And to the people from the Taco Booms Day who didn't receive my friend request, if you're listening to this, freaking add me. I have to be friends <laughs> with you for three days. I got all the four winners, but the two other people, I think I still need to get their, their friend requests added. So they'll be coming. Do you have, your, be coming. Do you have their names handy? Uh, no, but I, sent, <laughs> like, I resent friend requests to them multiple okay. times just in case that didn't go through for some reason. So gotcha. Cool. Just want to just want to say it on the show. Sweet. Uh, yes, Jocelyn, what do. about what about you and all the other fine pieces of entertainment you're creating? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch. I'm at Joss Plays. And uh, we are still in the month of December. So you guys still have a couple more weeks to donate to Extra Life. So I'm still going to keep talking about it. You can go to bit.ly slash TGI Extra Life 2018 and donate to anyone on our roster. Uh, we have hit our goals, but that doesn't mean that the kids don't still need help. So uh, again, that benefits the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. And we've had a great time streaming this year. So go check it out. Great job, everybody who donated to that. I'm glad you hit your goal. Me uh, too. <laughs> folks i'm garrett i'm garrett art on twitter all the podcasts i do can be found at amove.tv uh hearthstone isn't the only blizzard game that is tra- uh, changing drastically in the last week heroes of the storm is pretty nutty right now and if you want to hear more about that head on over and find into the nexus either on amove.tv wherever podcasts can be found i also have a solo podcast called r2t2 which you can find by searching for r2-t2 wherever podcasts can be found. I do a lot of WoW talk over there, but I've also been talking about Red Dead Redemption. And someone wrote in and asked me about cars because they know that I'm into that. So if that sounds fun to you, go listen to that. It's a very specific Venn diagram. (laughs) That's going to wrap it up for the show. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. But until next time, good night, Evie. Good night, Evie. Good night, Evie. Yes.